What is going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. Now today I've got for you five entitled parent stories which you're going to absolutely love. Before we get into them though, as you can probably hear, my voice is, is not the best it's ever been at the moment. I was at a festival over the weekend. Uh, here's a video, if you're watching on YouTube, of me dancing in the men's urinals. <laughs> Hope you enjoy that so yeah trying to recover but i want to be back narrating stories just like this so give me a break it will get better but yeah for now sit back relax enjoy some phenomenal entitled parents content let's go she's under 10 so she eats for free i own a small restaurant classic american foods decent prices kid friendly one of our policies is that kids 10 and under can get anything off the kids menu for free the stuff on the kids menu is cheap like a bowl of mac and cheese with some chicken nuggets isn't breaking my bank on food cost. A hot dog and some fries aren't going to bankrupt me. Last night, I was sitting in the office watching some YouTube videos when I noticed the family that I know personally. Their daughter, 12, is friends with my granddaughter, who is 13. When I see people I know, I have a tendency to sort of take over the table. The server still gets the tip, but I give the table a lot of extra attention. So I stop over and say hi, and I check their ticket in the computer out of curiosity. The dad got our 22 ounce porterhouse with a fully dressed potato, butter, cheese, sour cream, bacon, chili, ranch dressing, and crispy fried onions. Goodness me, I hope none of you are hungry listening to this. That has got me salivating. The mum got our fried catfish and hush puppies. The daughter got our pulled pork cheeseburger with onion rings. Note, the daughter ordered off the main menu, not the kids menu. Anyway, they spent about 40 minutes eating, drinking, and generally being merry. Both myself and their server are keeping an eye on their drinks, making sure they're having a good experience. I even gave them five free credits on the jukebox, just to be nice. I head back to the office to take a phone call, and while I'm back there, I notice a commotion on the cameras at that very same table. Before I can make it to the dining room, the server is in the kitchen, heading towards my office. Apparently, there was a mistake with their tab, and their daughter's meal should have been free. The server tried to explain that that only applies to items on the kids' menu, and the girl had ordered off the main menu. The explanation fell on deaf ears. So, I head out to solve the problem. I explained that not only did the girl order off the main menu, but I know for a fact that their daughter is not 10 or under, since my granddaughter had been to her 12th birthday party back in March. The mum tried to argue, but the dad put his hand up, apologised for his wife's behaviour, and passed me his card to pay. Before they'd even left my establishment, the mum had already left a nasty and completely false Google review stating that we lie about our policies and kids don't really get free meals. Okay, well, it's a good thing that the dad is sensible, unlike the mum. But what I really want to see out of this, and, and I personally love when I see this, is when you see a bad Google review left for a particular establishment. To be honest, a lot of the time it is a restaurant. And then immediately under that, you can see the response left by the restaurant owner that just destroys the original review, just literally sentence for sentence. Every single point, a lot of the time, the manager has a rebuttal for. So I'd love to see this in, in this situation. You know, the woman clearly lying about what had happened, probably saying, my kid's under 10, but wasn't allowed to have you know, a free meal, even though she, she ordered it off the kids menu. Just obviously all a lie there. And I'd love to see OP just, yeah, say, no, nah, not true at all. And completely ratio the original review. Now moving on to our second story of the episode. This one actually has an update afterwards as well. My parents assume they are going to move in with me when they are old. I was on the phone with them this morning because they called after I texted them an update on my husband's and my house hunting adventure. I'm currently pregnant with baby number three and live safely 15-ish hours away from these people who birthed and raised me while simultaneously messing me up mentally and emotionally. Why I stay in contact with them nowadays is becoming more and more of a mystery to me, but here we are. Well, while looking at one of the houses I was describing online, my dad asked where would they stay in the future? Stupidly thinking, as a guest, I mentioned one of the extra rooms could be a multi-purpose room. If you have an air mattress and you're coming for a visit, there you go. This house has four bedrooms, five if you count one of the rooms on the main floor. He then asked about permanently, further in the future. I said, permanently? He said, when I retire, or sometime after that, you know, stairs won't be your mums and my friends around then. What, you think you'll be living with us? Of course. No, 
I say. But we can help with the kids. No. Then my mum got involved. Remember, we always talked about this when you were younger. No. What? Are you going to put us in a home? You'll make friends, I said. Well, that's not nice of you. I never said I was. The discussion ended after that. And then a few days later, we got the following update. So for a little bit more context, first of all, I am a 29 year old woman. My husband is 28 and we are house hunting as we're expecting our third baby in November and are hoping to move out of our trailer park by the end of summer. We were interested in a house that was essentially my dream home. Victorian, built in 1900, but completely refurbished on the inside, but with all the original wood floors and detailing, gorgeous. A house like this would easily be $200,000 last year or the year before, but the housing market is dropping and we found it for approximately $140,000. We live in the Midwest. Oh my goodness me. So a five bedroom or four bedroom house for $140,000. Oh, the fact that I live in London sometimes is just absolutely brutal. That is a disgusting price. Oh my goodness me. Genuinely, 10 times the price of that you would need for a house like that in London. Uh, It's just insane. Anyway, it has four to five bedrooms and two full bathrooms. There we go. OP has clarified. My parents the other day asked where they would stay when we come to live with you. That's in quotes. Now, this was never a discussion. They just always assumed they'd live with me when they're older, and I always said no. Well, we messaged the finance person about what the monthly payments would really be. On the app, it estimated $950 plus a month. We figured we could swing that, but needed to know for sure before putting an offer in. She came back with over $1,000. That's not doable for us. We're going through a program and have a grant, so we aren't rich. Lower middle class at best. Thankfully, we have another house we had in mind. A craftsman style built in 1920 with built-ins wood floors and a nice sized fenced in backyard The basement even has a slightly finished room perfect for hiding from storms and tornadoes And it's twenty thousand dollars less than the dream house It's just a little smaller and bedrooms were pretty small, but it's something I was willing to deal with We saw it before we saw the dream house Well when updating my parents on the house situation my mum all but threw a fit You don't have to go with the first house you see. It wasn't, I replied. You can wait until something else comes up. Actually, no, we can't. Some weird law passes in our state in regards to realtors, and our realtor wants us to find a house before it goes into full effect in July slash August, which just gives us more incentive to find a house pronto. So far, no other houses have popped up in our area in our budget. You're about to have your third kid. Where are you going to put him? Well, bunk beds are a thing. Are you going to sleep in the basement if you have more? We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. It's so tiny. It's bigger than what pictures show. But yes, compared to the dream house, it's definitely smaller than that. But it's also more realistic. I knew what she was really worried about, though, the whole time. Where will we stay? But she didn't say it. She started looking at other houses on the app and tried to bring them up to me. They were all houses we'd already looked at or were too far away from my husband's work. She was really trying. My dad was actually pretty chill about the whole thing. She even brought up a house that needed serious work. We want to live in the house, mum, and we don't want a money pit. She practically growled at me. The call soon ended after that. The one thing I don't really ever understand with these people is just like where their conscience is at or, or just how they feel about things in general just makes no sense to me. If I was begging my own children to let me live with them when I'm older, I would just be so like... I don't know, I'd have to be in such a weird mindset or just state to do that. Especially when I'm still perfectly happy, like living with my husband or wife or whatever. It's just weird. Are you not just chill living on your own? Do you really want to be around your kids that much or just use them, I think, is really what's going on here to such an extent. But then I feel like in my head, I'd just be like, what am I doing? I'm using my own kids for housing. Am I not a bit better than that? Should it not, if anything, be the other way around? I don't know. It's really weird. If you actually need to live with your children for sort of, you know, medical reasons or because you are incapable of doing things and and living by yourself because you're older, that's completely fair enough. But that's just not what's going on here. So I don't get it. It's just a very, very weird mentality, I think. Left her kid alone in a bookstore for hours and thought it was totally normal. This here happened a while ago. I recently got reminded of it after meeting an old friend and I thought I'd share this story because I know after 13 years in retail slash customer services that many people would think that what she did was okay. Back when I worked in a bookstore in a shopping mall, there was this little girl. 
maybe five to six years old, just sitting quietly in a corner, looking at the pictures of a book. At that moment, we just noticed her because she was kind of hidden, tucked in a corner and was totally silent. We asked where her parents were. She said her mummy was in the shop next to ours and told her to wait in the bookstore. We asked if she knew how long it had been and she pointed to the hands of the clock where they'd been when her mum left. It had been nearly three hours. I still can't believe that kid stayed quiet for so long and I'm still kicking myself for not noticing her sooner. We took her to the mall security and they started looking for the mum. That brainless woman was in another mall next to ours. We have three smaller shopping malls on the same street next to each other. The mall security was shocked. One of them was a dad and went to get the kid biscuits and an apple juice. He knew right away she was really hungry after three hours all alone waiting. I never forgot how happy she was munching on those chocolate chip cookies and sipping her juice box. They called the police and child protection services. Me and my colleague waited with the kid. We actually had brought the book with us for some reason, so she wouldn't be too scared. When the mum finally arrived, I swear she did not understand at all why what she did was wrong and got annoyed at us for going to security. She argued that her daughter was safe in our store and that she, quote, knew to not cause trouble. That got the police suspicious because the kid was indeed very quiet and eerily well behaved. Looking back, it's kind of obvious that she was scared into being this quiet and calm as a child. The mother's justification was basically that since our store was selling books for kids and some toys, we were essentially babysitters and that we were the ones in the wrong for not, quote, wanting to do our job and watch the children. Needless to say, the cops were just totally done with her and took her to the police station. The kid went with child protection services. The mum was kicking and screaming, threatening to sue us for slander and defamation. Now, of course, that never happened, but I hope this little girl is now with better people. She's now with people who love and cherish her. Yeah, I mean, surely that's just illegal, guys. But to be honest, I actually don't know the rules about um, if you're allowed to leave your kid just randomly in public. But I presume it's got to be illegal. I mean, it has to be, right? Child, child protection services have got to be having a look at this and saying, it's just not right. I agree with your last point, though. I hope she is with better people. And you're right. No child that age, usually five to six years old, would be quiet. For, for that length of time clearly they were very hungry as well without it being drummed into them in probably a, a very well bordering on abusive if not abusive way that they have to be quiet so yeah a lot's going on there not just this one incident there's probably a lot more bad stuff happening as well neighbor thinks her kids bedtime should decide when i can do my hobbies my neighbor who is a 27 year old woman has five kids and one more on the way she doesn't work she's not ill or anything just chooses not to lives off benefits and is all sorts of entitled. Tonight, I was working on my brother's birthday present and this included needing to make a few cuts with the chop saw. It was 9 p.m. and I was done by 9.15 p.m. In my country, the curfew for noise and noise disturbance is 11.30 p.m. She then sends me this long Facebook message about how her kid's bedtime is 8 p.m. and therefore I need to not use power tools after that time and could I only use them in the daytime so as to not wake her kids? I replied saying I was done now. Bear in mind, she sent that message after literally less than 10 minutes of noise and that I couldn't confine my usage to daytime because I have a job. I could have said a lot more. I felt like saying to her, your kids are going to be living with a screaming newborn in a few months. So maybe focus on teaching them to sleep without it being perfectly silent. But I restrained myself. Even so, the very little I did say clearly set her off. She sent me another paragraph about her kids needing to be ready for school at 8 a.m., before blocking me. Now, I will just say here that I do think that being respectful to your neighbors and people living around you in terms of noise pollution is a very fair thing. And, you know, if you know that you live around families that have young children that want to get to sleep early, I would suggest that in general, trying not to use power tools late at night is a good thing to do, which by the way, I'm sure OP does in general. However, on one off occasions where you need to do something and yeah, obviously you can't choose, you know, to use any hour of the day to, to use your power tools if you have a normal life with a normal job and other commitments, then it's absolutely fine to do. And I think her reaction is pretty insane, to be honest. Yeah, the main point being you have to teach your children how to sleep through a lot of noise. I mean, now, thankfully, due to due to my parents, I think teaching me as a child to, to sleep with a lot of noise going on. I know that sounds weird, but my mum actually does often say to me, 
oh aren't you lucky that we used to vacuum around your cot when you were young because i sleep under the flight path last year i slept right on a main road with with loads of cars going through completely fine i think it's up to your up to your parents really to to teach children how to do that and not up to everyone else in the neighborhood to, to work around young children yeah it's nice to be nice but not all the time and you can't just be living your life to the strict regimented daily schedule of children now for our final entitled parent story of this episode entitled disney adult demands that i change clothes in the middle of a crowded restaurant to preface this situation came up a few years back but still lives rent free in my mind from how absurd it was i was on a family vacation at disney world a few years back i 19 years old at the time was staying on property at a resort but on our first night we had dining reservations at a different hotel that was a fair distance away It was a casual buffet style restaurant so there was no dress code or reason to be fancy so i wore a pair of shorts and a graphic tee of a unicorn that said everything sucks in a glittery cursive font about halfway into dinner when i got up to get seconds a woman probably in her 40s stepped up to physically block me and immediately started shouting in my face about my obscene clothing I just stood there completely baffled while she went on and on about how our young children who were calmly eating on the other side of the room were being distressed by my quote disgusting and inappropriate shirt and then she demanded I take it off in the middle of the restaurant when I told her I don't exactly carry replacement clothes with me she demanded that I go to the gift shop and buy a new family friendly shirt specifically one with Disney princesses or Minnie on it because That's what her children would like to see. At that point, I didn't want to deal with her anymore and said that I'm not here to appeal to kids I don't even know. The waitress would have stopped me at check-in if there was a problem with my clothing and I just wanted to eat my dinner and leave. I walked away to get the rest of my meal and left her screaming at me for a few minutes before she eventually gave up. I hope those kids turned out okay. You know what I would have done in that situation right there? And I actually... I, well, I wouldn't have done this right, but in my heart of hearts, I would have loved to do this. It's just take my top off and just like whip it around my head and just chuck it. I've been like, there you go. You happy now? Are you happy now? This is what you asked for. Just full nips out. In fact, I'm going to do it now. But in all seriousness, I mean, this woman's just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. You should have said to her, well, if you want me to change my shirt, go and buy me one from the gift store. Then I'll change it. Because in, in, that, in that way, you're getting a good deal. Even if the shirt's terrible, you could then donate it afterwards and keep your own shirt. But yeah insane again kind of similar to the last story not everyone is going to work around your children who also again by the way don't care at all anyway guys that is going to do it for this one really hope you enjoyed it if you did and you want more from me right away then check out this episode i put on screen it's also linked down below yeah i hope my voice is going to be back to normal pretty soon hopefully by tomorrow it'll be back let me know was it that noticeable was it husky was it was actually better should i lose my voice more often Comment down below and I'll catch you all on the next one.